The following is a lecture given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on the 1st of July, 1974, in Melbourne, Australia. Om Abhyana Timiram Vishra Gyanam Jana Shalakaya Chakshu Militam Jena Tasmai Sri Gurave Noa Sri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Sapitam Jena Bhutale Sayam Rupa Padamayam Dadati Sapadantikam He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Vandya Yavattate Gopesha Gopita Kanta Radha Kanta Nurti Tapta Kanta Gaurangi Radhe Vindavaneshwari Vikavhan Sute Devi Pranamami Kripti Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you very much for your joining us in this Krishna Consciousness Moment. Krishna, when I utter the word Krishna, it means God. It is Sanskrit word. Krishna, those who are Sanskrit students, you know, Krishnaku. Attracts, one who attracts. God is the supreme being, full with six kinds of opulences. Therefore, He attracts everyone. This is the definition of the word Krishna. This Bhagavad Gita is spoken by Krishna, the perfect person. We receive knowledge from the perfect person. When we receive knowledge from imperfect person, the knowledge is not complete. At the present age, mostly the scientists, they cannot give us perfect knowledge because there are so many ifs. They say it may be perhaps like that. But this is not perfect knowledge. The perfect knowledge means there is no if, there is no perhaps, there is no doubt. So we are receiving knowledge from Krishna, the Supreme Perfect Being. He says that Dehinasmin Jatha Dehi. Asmin Dehe, Asmin means this body, you have got your body, I have got my body. So within this body there is the proprietor of the body, Asmin Dehe. Dehi na Asmin. Dehi means the proprietor of the body. I do not see you, I see your body, you see my body, but within the body the proprietor is dying or is situated, that we do not see. But we can understand. Suppose my beloved father is dead or somebody is dead. I cry, my father is gone. So where is your father gone? He is lying there, unconscious. He may come to consciousness, okay? But we say, no, he is gone. Dead means he is gone. So, actually, I never saw my father who has gone. I saw the body of my father, and that is lying on the bed. Why I am crying? My father is gone. So therefore, this is called ignorance. We do not see the real father within the body 
or we do not see the real sun within the body, we see the outward dress. This is ignorance. So we are preaching Krishna consciousness movement on the platform of the spirit soul which we do not see with this material eyes. This is great ignorance. After the death we cry that my father is gone, my son is gone. But where is gone? He is lying on the bed. Still we do not come to the understanding what is the difference between the living body and the dead body. There are so many theories, uh, but as I have already told you, that we receive knowledge from the perfect person, Krishna. He says that within this body, the owner of the body is there. And on account of the owner of the body, presence, the body is changing. The owner, the owner of the body is sometimes in the childhood body. The owner of the body is sometimes in a different boyhood body. The owner of the body is sometimes in the youthhood body. Similarly, as he is changing different types of body during this duration of life, similarly, after this annihilation of this body, when it is old, that's why old garment or old coat, old shirt cannot be used. It is thrown away, and as a new shirt, new coat is taken. Similarly, this body being annihilated, the soul accepts another body. This is a real knowledge. Tathādehāntara-prāti dhīra-tattva-namayyati. This is explained in Bhagavad-gītā very broadly. Just like here it is said that mātrāsvar-sāsya-kūntiya-sītasna-sukha-dukkhada āgma-pāyanya-nitya-tāntitikha-sabhāra. Our real business, real education is to understand what I am and not this body. But that education is lacking. So our main business is to understand that I am not this body, and the bodily pains and pleasure, they are due to the change of season. Just like now it is winter season, we are covering our body. In the summer season we do not like so heavily dressed. So this feeling of pains and pleasure is due to this material body. Therefore, Krishna says, Janghina vatanti te purusham purusar sava samadukha sukha dhiram sa amritatayakal. Real business of human life is to understand the spirit soul. And so far, the material body is concerned, just like seasonal changes, we feel pains and pleasure, just like water. In this winter season, on account of the seasonal change, we do not like to touch water at the present moment. But the same water in the summer season will be very pleasing. So the water is the same, but due to seasonal changes, sometimes the water is very pleasing and sometimes it is very painful. So this material world, so long we shall remain in the material world. The pains and pleasure on account of this material body we have to feel. But if we come to the spiritual platform, that is, understanding of the soul, then in any condition we shall be happy. That is stated in the Bhagavad Gita, Brahma Bhuta Prasannatma, Na Sochati Natankati. Samas sarveshu bhūteshu mad bhakti lavate param. Brahma bhūta means self-realized, that I am not this body, I am spirit soul. This is the first realization, self-realization. So long we are not on this platform of spiritual understanding, we are equal to the animals. Animals, they do not know what is the difference between body and the soul. Uh, a dog is always thinking that I am this body. 
Similarly, if a man thinks that I am this body, he is no better than the dog, because he has no realization of this self. Therefore, the Vedic literature says, Yashyatma buddhi kunapi tidhātuke sadhik kalatra dhisi homo Actually, we are standing on a false platform, understanding this body as the self, and in relationship with the body, we are considering this country is my country, this man is my family man or my national man. So, all this bodily concept of life is based on ignorance because we do not know soul. Actually, the human life is meant for being educated that he is not this body, he is soul. That is the Vedanta Sutra philosophy. To inquire about the spirit soul, that is our main business. Unfortunately, we are traveling all over the world. There is no institution, no school, no college, no university where this education is given that what I am, am I this body or I am something else? No, I am something else. So this education can be given through this Krishna consciousness movement. On the basis of Sri Bhagavad Gita, everything is explained very vividly. Uh, the soul is eternal. The soul is transferred from one gross body to another gross body. Just like we change our apartment from one apartment to another. But I exist. If I vacate one apartment and I go to another apartment, it does not mean I am finished. I may leave the apartment. Similarly, if we are leaving this body and we are going to another body, say, I am not finished. I am existing. Nahannate hannamane sarire. Nahannate the soul is never annihilated even after the destruction of this body. Therefore, the question is that if I am eternal, why I am put into this condition of changing or transmigrating from one body to another? Is there any possibility of not changing the body to keep eternality? Yes, that is possible. Actually, we are, as spirit soul, the part and parcel of God. So God is eternal. God is blissful. God is in full knowledge. So we being part and parcel of God, we have got the same quality. We have come to serve God, His purpose. God is very kind upon every one of us. He comes Himself. He sends his son, he sends his devotee to reclaim, as I was explaining, that in the material condition of life, we have been changing from one body to another. This is not very good condition of life. Oh, nobody wants to die, but he is forced to die. Nobody wants to take birth, but he is forced to take birth. Nobody wants to become old man. But he becomes old man. And nobody wants to become diseased, but he is forced to take some disease. This is our condition. Now, this human form of body is a chance to understand what is our real inconvenience birth, death, old age, and disease. And to think of whether there is any way out of this entanglement of repetition of birth, death, old age, and disease. This is Krishna consciousness movement. We are educating people how to get out of the clutches of illusion that continually, one after another, we are to take birth. Janma mitta jarabhadi, dukkha dushana darsana. Real problem is this. So if we take to Krishna consciousness, that means if we understand what is God, what I am, what is our relationship, what is the ultimate goal of our life? If these things we understand, then we can get out of these clutches of illusion, reputation of birth, death, old age, and disease. 
This is the Krishna consciousness movement, some and substance. And to realize this, the method is very simple. Chant the holy name of God. We are chanting the holy name of God. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram. So, our only request is that we have got this human form of body. Don't misuse it. Don't waste it like animals, simply by eating, sleeping, mating, and depending. We have got another business. A human being has got extra intelligence. That extra intelligence than the animal is meant for realizing himself, not to live like cats and dogs. That is not human form of life. So this Krishna consciousness movement is educational movement. It is not a religious sentiment. It is a science. And we have got our books also. You have seen there is demonstration on the book. We have got already twenty books of four hundred pages each. And we are going on writing more books. The everything will be finished in eighty books. So if you want to know through science and philosophy, we have got our books. You can read. And even if you read the complete set, it will take your whole life to finish it. But if you, if you cannot read or if you do not want to waste your time by such reading, it is not wasting, it is actually utilizing. But if you think so, then our request is that you simply chant the holy name of God. We are not required to do that. So let them question and answer. Our spiritual master has traveled about 10,000 miles to come and speak to you. We have not come here to drive anyone to come and listen to him. We have uh, rented this hall. We have rented this hall here, and we have invited people, cordially, to come and listen as representatives of the intelligentsia of Australia. Now, the intelligentsia of Australia cannot sit for half an hour I'm listening to a gentleman speak about the love of God, it does not speak very well for you. We are simply not asking for disturbance. We are not asking for violence, but we will meet violence with violence. We are not artificially pacifists. We are asking you to listen like gentlemen. We have come here in good will. We have come here not to cause any disturbance. So we ask you please to have that much respect for our spiritual master. Now at this time, if there's any question about Krishna consciousness philosophy, not about fighting, we can go out the street and fight, we can solve everything out there. We have come here to speak about spiritual matters. If you want to speak about spiritual matters, well, let's speak together, like brothers and sisters. Let's not call it disturbance. I have a, an ego, you have an ego. If you do something to flick off my ego, I may get mad. If I do something to flick off your ego, you get mad. So we'll go out into the street and set it like a cat and a dog? No. We're not here in this university to act like that. We're supposed to be raised above that platform. So please, we ask you to present sober questions to our spiritual master. Yes, sir? The question was, this man is a follower of Lord Jesus Christ, and he would like to know what our opinion is of Jesus Christ. We respect Jesus Christ as you do, because he is the representative of God, son of God. And we are also speaking of God, so we respect Him with our greatest veneration. No, I am not Jesus. I am servant of Jesus. You are a son of Jesus. I am servant of Jesus. What does that mean? I don't say I am Jesus. No, I have no power of Jesus. Well, also the power of Jesus. <laughs> That's all right. You are Christian, we are Christian. Practically the same thing. <laughs> Well, he is coming, welcome. He shall welcome. Yeah. It's very good news that this is his time. Jesus had no reputation. He wore sandals and he was crucified between two feet. And he carried flick knives. And your, your spirituality is on a, in a Rolls Royce, on a padded seat, 
and all the and you're all in the money, you Christians. You want money, you rip off people in the streets. No, I don't want money. Yes, this Krishna consciousness movement is not a sentimental religious system. It is science and philosophy. The attempt is to awaken God consciousness. God is neither Christian nor Hindu nor Muslim. God is God. Then maybe angles have vision to approach God, but God is one. Therefore, our attempt is that you become God conscious. Don't be limited by Christianism or Hinduism or Mahometanism. So, our formula is explained in the Srimad Bhagavatam. We have got the copies there. Sabai Pumshan Paro Dharma Jatu Bhakti Raghu Khaji. That is first class religious system by which the followers become a lover of God. This is the, our formula. Either you go through Christianism or Hinduism and Muslimism, if you understand what is God and if you know what is your relationship with God in this way, your goal of life, how to learn to love God, that is achieved, mm. then it doesn't matter through which religion you achieve that perfection. But if you can achieve that perfection, that system is perfect. This is our problem. The second part of the question was this. One other man comes to the East, Krishna Murti, he stresses that when you are speaking in the Western world, you should Such person is neither Westerner nor Easterner. So anywhere he goes, the devotees, as they receive him, they accept. These devotees, they have arranged the red seat. So we have accepted this red seat. If they wanted to sit down on the floor, I would have gladly accepted. I have no objection, this or that. But as the devotees receive, and they give honor. That is good for them because actually we should honor the Supreme Lord, God, and His representative. Nowadays it is different when students and people are learning not to honor. But that is not actually the system. According to Vedic system, the representative of God must be honored as God. Yasna prasāda and bhagavat prasāda. This that in India, uh, we had British rule, the governor general, he was Bhaisrāt. So he was given honor, as much honor we used to give to the king. So uh, that is the etiquette, that is the system. It is not that the honor given to the Bhaisra exactly like to the king. He becomes a king. No. He is servant of king. But it is the duty of the citizen to honor the representative of the king as king. That is etiquette. That is our basic system. Yes, he is the only way. We also admit. Because he is the representative of God. So if you want to approach God, you must approach through his representative. That is his person. And the only name, because he is the representative of God, then you have to reach God through Him. That is fair. Alright, uh, we can ask it one at a time. I can ask it for you, but uh, our movement is not coming from the United States. If you have, if you have, if you have some paranoia uh, uh, stigma about uh, everything coming from the United States, well, that's your hang up, not mine. Uh, first of all, our spiritual master, uh, he came to the United States to stop the Consciousness movement, uh, if you got a free ticket on the boat, go there. 
And because he was in mercy on this one lady who gave him a sweet ticket on the boat, he came to America to, uh, on the orders of his spiritual master. This is the reason he came to America to start with the function. If you had sent him a sweet ticket, he probably would have come to Australia first. Uh, he was a monk, he was a monk, a penniless monk in, in, in India, and he was trying to follow the orders of his spiritual teacher by spreading love of God. He's not trying to stop any kind of a political movement. Actually, he is trying to spark a revolution in consciousness. I think that uh, you are also interested in revolution. We are also interested in revolution also, but we are interested in the revolution which will help people to feel peace of themselves, whether they're communists or Marxists or Leninists or whatever it you would like. We're trying to help people feel happy, whether they're in the city or whether they're in the country or whether they're under uh, any... This is what we're trying to do. So we are also revolutionaries. Uh, we are also revolutionaries. And actually, we request you to cooperate with this Krishna consciousness movement so actually we can change the consciousness of the world, not just change from one political system to another political system. That's been going on for time immemorial, and we see there's no solution. Because people are changing their politics, they're not changing their consciousness. They're not changing their consciousness. They're not changing themselves inside. They just change their ism from communism to capitalism, and from capitalism back to something elseism. We're asking people to try to get a little bit beyond that superficial political system and, and find out what actually motivates each and every one of us. That is uh, God consciousness, the love of God. That love of God is much more powerful than any temporary political system. Right. Hey, listen, if you're that bloody good, why'd you beat up my mate? Yeah. 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 Well, you got yeah. 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 Yeah.